I'm going to show you how to make beautiful, cute, snowy cottages so you can make a fun winter scene like this. Or if you want the easy way, then download the completely free asset pack. There's 87 unique assets that you can use in your scenes and games. And if you do use them, then let me know. I'd love to see what you're up to and what you're making. So let's make some cute snowy cottages. So I can start off with the default cube. Let's go into edit mode, scale it down. I'll select the top face and grab that in the Z axis. So G then Z and bring it up. So I've got a long chunky piece of wood like this. Control R to do a loop cut and bring my mouse into the middle. I can use the wheel of my mouse to create two like this and then left click to set, and then I have to left click to set the position. So now I've got enough topology to add a bit of wobbliness to the piece of wood. So I can press R to rotate, for example. We've got just a little bit there. Maybe scale and shift Z so it's not in the Z axis and bring these in slightly so it's slightly thicker at the ends. I can select the top and maybe rotate that very slightly and the bottom, rotate that very slightly. So just a tiny bit of editing there. If I press Control R and do a loop cut down the middle, like so, and left click twice, I can then go in and add some splits and notches. If I press one on my keyboard to go to vertex mode or vertex mode over here, I can select the top and press Control, Shift and B. That's the command to bevel vertex. I'll bring this out slightly and then select these two vertices and press J to join. And we created a cool looking notch there, but I can press GG to edge slide and bring this down here and I've got a split in the wood. I probably have to bring these two together a bit. So scale X and we've got this sort of split just there. I can create another one at the bottom here. So select that one, Control Shift B, bring that out, maybe slightly less this time. Select these two across here, press J to join, and again, bring this up. So GG to edge slide. Now, if you want to slide it into the other one above it, make sure you've got this button turned on here, which is Auto Merge Vertices. So when I press GG, slide it into the other one. It is now one vertex. Without that button, it would stay as two. Okay, so this is great. What about a little bit more variation? Perhaps I'll have some around the back here. Control B, bevel vertex, select these two, J to join. Bring this down a little bit less this time. And I'll bring these in a little bit more as well. And maybe I'll select these and G to grab in the X and bring them off to the side slightly. I can press G then Z, maybe bring that down. So it's a little bit longer, somewhere around here. Add a bit of variation, just move these up and down. I can even select one of them, GG, and slide it in if I don't want so many vertices around the place. Maybe bring this one down here. Surprising how much difference triangles can make to uniform rectangles like this. I can also select a vertex and press Control Shift B on the side here, bring that out. I'll have to slide these together, so GG, and then select these two and J to join. That way I've got a nice notch there. It's a little bit big, so I can just select it all, scale it down a bit. We've got a nice simple notch there in the wood. So lots of nice variation there. Now at this point, it's actually quite helpful to go across to material preview mode and into object mode. And we can kind of see what this is going to look like. We could even go across to the shading workspace and add a brown color to this. So a little bit darker, across to the browns, somewhere around about here. I'd always like to make it a little bit rough as well. I think that just looks a little bit better. So back to layout mode, see what that looks like. And I think that's looking like a nice piece of wood now. If I go to front view, you can see my object origin is in a bit of an awkward spot down at the bottom here. It's really useful to have it on one of the corners, such as here. So if I press shift right click, it doesn't have to be absolutely precise, but there will do. And then right click, set origin to 3D cursor. Now when I scale it up, so scale in the Z, it will scale from this point. And if I rotate it, it's much easier to know exactly where it's going. So let's put it above the floor, G to grab, put it above the floor. It doesn't matter if it intersects the floor slightly, that's helpful. And now I can start thinking about duplicating this. So I'll press shift D and move it across in the X axis and start building the frame. Now, obviously these look exactly the same. So we can select this, press R, Z, 90, and it's rotated it around and it looks slightly different. Or back to front view, R, 180, and then bring it up like this. That's just enough to add a bit of variation so it looks like a different piece of wood. You can, of course, go in and just start editing things and moving it around so it looks different, but I find you don't have to do too much of that. Okay, so let's mirror this to the back side. Obviously, if I mirror it, it's going to look exactly the same from the back as it does to the front, but you can kind of get away with that sort of thing. I'll start with my original just here, go to my modifiers, add modifier, and then start typing in mirror and include the mirror. Now, at the moment, it's mirroring on its object origin just here, and it's going along the x-axis, as you can see just here. We want it to go to the y-axis and only the y-axis. So now it's coming out towards us and we can move the object origin into the middle here or something, or maybe into the middle here and use the mirror, but it's actually much easier to use an object empty. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go to top view, click somewhere around here, shift A to add, empty, 
and then plane axis. Then I'll click on my wooden beam, choose the mirror object and then choose the empty. And that's flipped it over to here because it's now going along the Y axis and using this as the middle point. So if I select this, move it around, we can easily move that empty. I want the same for this one over here. So I'll select this, shift select this one, control L and copy modifiers. And we've got that one at the back there and we've got our frame just here and I can change the length of it if I want to by moving my empty. From here, it's just a case of taking one of these beams, shift D to duplicate, create a new one, R minus 90, and then move that into position on the top here, scale in the X. Might want to adapt this very slightly just so it looks a little bit different to the other ones. Alt Z to go into X-ray mode. And we could even do some sort of door here as well. Remember to rotate it around so it looks a little bit different. And we can always go in and edit it slightly so it's a bit wobbly. So something like this, a little bit taller. Overlapping your objects is absolutely fine. And then let's duplicate this one. And we've got some sort of doorway there and a back door as well. It's a little bit chunky, but I think that's okay. How do we create the walls? Well, let's go to front view, shift A to add, mesh, and then plane. The plane's along here. We can press RX 90 to rotate it, move it into position roughly. It may be the case that your walls are a bit wobbly, so you might need to actually move the vertices into position like so. Make sure it actually lines up. So back into object mode, G then Y, move it to the front like this, and you've got a simple wall. If you need to, you might have to add some loop cuts. If you have to add some variation to the wall because your beams are a bit more wobbly. That's absolutely fine. And that's how we build the structure of the house. And here's me actually building the houses that I showed you at the beginning, using exactly the same technique, building one beam, duplicating it, editing it slightly, using that mirror with the empty object as the mirror. I build a second floor in exactly the same way, just duplicating the first and moving it out slightly. And there's the roof structure built in exactly the same way. I'll talk about the snow in just a moment, but you can see me making the walls here. And with the more awkward walls at the top there, you can see I have to move the vertices into position and adapt them slightly. So how do I build these snowy roofs? So let's say you haven't got a roof yet. I'll shift right click, shift A to add, mesh, plane, and start putting that into position. This doesn't quite fit, so I'll need to do a loop cut down the middle there. And it may be that I need to bevel that as well. Let's go around to side view. I can extrude these out and then move them into position. If your roof is completely symmetrical, you can add a mirror or I can just put these into position manually. So I've got the roof in a rough position. It doesn't have to be precise at the moment. Now the nice easy way to build snow is to go to face mode with three, or that's face mode up here. Select all your faces and just extrude them outwards. Make them nice and thick, about the thickness you want for your snow. Then you can go across to the sculpting workspace. I'll just zoom out a bit so we can see that. Now I haven't got enough vertices to sculpt with. The easy way to sort that out is to go to the remesh. The voxel size is the size of the faces it's going to make and the remesh will fill it in with those size faces. Now this is slightly easier with the shortcut key of R to see the size of the faces. So that's the voxel size and we can have it probably around here. So this rough size and then control R to remesh and you can see it's turned it all into tiny faces. I'll go into edit mode so you can see those faces and they're all there. Now back into sculpt mode, I can use my brushes. I'll just bring the brushes out so you can see them. The draw brush will work just fine and you can draw it out like this. You might want to, if I undo that, use your mirror in the Y axis. That way it will come out to the other side if you've got a symmetrical shape and you can just start sculpting it. Probably easiest with something like the grab brush just here. I'll just resize my brush with F. You've also got the radius up here and you can just move this into position, grab it around, smooth it out with shift. And you can see I'm creating simple snow and it's nice and adaptable this. I can go back to the draw brush, make it a bit wobbly and lumpy as well. And that's my preferred way of doing it because you've got lots of control. If I go back to layout mode now, Looks okay, but it's a bit chunky, so I might want to right click, shade smooth, and you can see I've got some snow on the top of my building. So I think those are the most important steps for building a nice cottagey house like this. I'll talk more about the landscape and the lighting in later videos. So any questions, comment below. Let me know if you use the asset pack. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.